Hello viewers, I'm Das Lucas and welcome to my Civilization 6 Beginner's Guide, Part 9. I am really struggling to remember what part we're on now, but there we go. <laughs> if you're still with me, good job. Right, today, this video, today, this video, whatever one it is, we are trying to expand via non-aggressive means. After our war with Egypt, in the previous parts, we've settled a city there to act as a guard against Phoenicia. And I think the first thing I'm going to show you in this part is tile purchasing. Now, sometimes you'll find that you have your city. Your city's ready to build something, or you need to harvest something, or there's a luxury that you want to build. But it's just outside your current borders. Now, you have two options here. You can either wait for your city to naturally expand in that direction and take over that tile, or you can tile purchase. You click on the tile purchase tile here from the city view, and it will give you a screen that looks like this. Now, all of these little gold pieces, as the amount of gold you need to expand in that direction, they increase the further away from the city centre you get. For me, I really need some iron, and I need some iron more or less soon. I want to get some legions out. Those legions will help me take over Phoenicia, but just don't tell them that. So I think to myself, okay, so I need a certain amount of iron to produce the legion, something I'll go over in a little while. And in order for me to do that, I need to start stockpiling iron as soon as possible. So what do I do? Well, I want to get that iron, and I want to build a mine on it, and I want to start stockpiling. But it's just outside of range. And I'm not sure where my city is going to expand to next, so I'm just going to cut out the middleman, spend 120 gold. This is yet another thing to save gold for, because you never know when you're going to need it. So, there's my gold. There's my tile. Nice and simple. I can now move my worker, builder, wh whoever he is, onto that iron and start mining it immediately. And start stockpiling immediately. As we go there, um, put the archers there, you can heal, hopefully we'll be able to whiz through quite a bit now, um, times of peace and we're just, we're just building at this point so, sending envoys, now obviously I'm already the suzerain of Buenos Aires but to be honest you want to get to 6 because 6 gives you the maximum amount of rewards you can get from a city state. So, let's continue just putting envoys in there. Um, trader. Hmm. Now, you may remember I said that all roads lead to Rome. Every time you build a city, a road will automatically be built between that city and Rome. However, and this is a big however... Roads are not built between your seconds and third cities. So unless they're in a line, like Antium is from Rakadet, and the road goes through that city, you'll end up being able to go to Rome as quick as you can, but struggling to get from city to city. So with that in mind, I am now going to build a road from Shadet to Antium. Now, this is where we show off Rome's all road leads to Rome's special ability with the traders. If I send it to Rome or Rakadet, I'll get plus one gold. If I send it to Antium, because it's going through Rakadet and Rakadet has a trading post, I get an extra gold per turn. So, send it to Antium, I build a road to Rakadet because it follows the trader, and I get an extra piece of gold. We win, win. So, off that goes. Obviously this is a special ability for Rome. No other Civ will have it. Uh, there are still bonuses about going through trading posts, but Rome is... It's more about the end goal, having a trading post, as opposed to Rome, where you can, if you chain them, you get more. Okay, build improvement, mine. Plus two iron per turn. Now, I do believe on standard speed you need 20 iron to build a unit. So... Obviously, we get that out as early as possible and we can build our legions when we discover them. Which is obviously my next goal. Oh, 
Well, that's Mount Etna still exploding, left, right, and centre. Now, thankfully, I'm just out of range. I was hoping of building a city over here, but the way Mount Etna's going, I'm thinking of building it further down. <laughs> it's just going to explode all over me. Uh, ooh, claim great person. Now, that's something that we haven't got yet. Great people. As you can see, there are many types. Great general, you usually get from war. Great admirals, you get from having navies and harbours. Great engineers, they technically come from industrial zones. Great merchants, commercial zones and trade. Great prophets, holy sites. Great scientists, I'll give you a guess. Yes, you're right. It's a science district. And a great whiter, whiters, sorry. Great writers, great artists and great musicians all come from the theatre district. But they um, more or less depend on what buildings you got. Amphitheatre, museum, uh, broadcast centre or whatever it's called. It's really end game. Um, you can get them from other means and they will stop pile and it's really annoying when you get a great artist and nowhere to put it. Thankfully that's where wonders come in sometimes so don't, don't, don't fuss about that too much. Uh, as for me I just got a great general because I got some encampments which give me great general and also I've been at war which also gives me great people points. Um, and the one I can unlock is Trung Track. Trung Track. Plus five combat strength and plus one movement to classical and medieval era land units within two tiles. This will last me all the way up to gunpowder, more or less. Permanently reduces your empire's war rareness by 25%. Now that is key, because again, we're going back to amenities with that one. War rareness, obviously, can decrease unhappiness in your empire. Your empire gets unhappy to get less productive. Less productive in wartime means less units to replace your losses. It can become a bit of a bad thing. So... Yes, yeah, I'll have that. So obviously in order to get that bonus I have to retire the Great General. What that does is consume the unit for the special boost and ability. Now for me, and the fact that I don't plan on going on Phoenicia for a little while, and the size of Phoenicia, I'm thinking that I can take them without worrying about war wariness. So, I will send my Great General to link up with a unit preferably on the front lines and it will boost the combat effectiveness of that unit and the surrounding units. Now Mount Etna can stop exploding please. Great people are also a great source, haha, <laughs> excuse the pun, of gaining error score. So if you're struggling for error score, produce as many great units as you can. Great people should I say. Uh, you can sleep there now, as we already know, I have some iron there, but I want to show you something else. Now, you may remember from the previous part, I showed you the adjacency bonus for the science district. Just to uh, go over it now, the campus, should I say. Don't know why I call it science district, it's just easier. Now, I get plus four by building it in this mountainous area. Now there are sheep there. Now I can just plop it down right here, removes the sheep, instantly goes in for the campus. However, I want to introduce you to harvesting. So if we get out of this view somehow. There we go. Right click, believe it or not. I will send this warrior. Uh, wa what? Warrior Luke, yes. This is a warrior now. Let's invade. I will send the builder over to the offending tile. I will then harvest that tile. And because I've harvested that tile, that city will get a boost because I harvested rather than just plop something down on top of it. And the boost is quite significant because obviously you're removing a tile for um, a tile yield for the entire game. Um, it can only be done for bonus resources. So. Don't get your hopes up too much about removing things like iron or luxury resources such as cocoa. It's literally just bonus resources such as your sheep, your stone, your copper. Uh, need more housing? Ooh, that's something I'll have to introduce you to. I'll say introduce you to, I have been over housing several times. As your city grows it needs more housing, as it needs more housing um, you can get it via various amount of sources. Um, each farm produces 0 
of a house so for every two farms you get a house and a house can house a citizen uh, the roman bath or aqueduct if you're not playing rome will give you a boost depending on where your city was initially founded the granary will give you housing as well there are plenty of sources of housing and when you get late game you get things like sewers and stuff that give you housing as well um, as long as you stay on top of it and keep an eye on your cities when they need housing you can keep expanding I would argue there's a point that you don't want to expand anymore but I like getting the numbers up as big as I can because I can alright put you on alert alright harvesting harvest resource yields 47 food remove sheep resource from this plot now as we can see I have four citizens in Rakadet with six turns before I get another citizen watch this he says suddenly I instantly go to five citizens and there's 17 turns until my next pop growth. That could be for a variety of reason. I might have run out of housing. Don't look like it. Oh, we're getting there. Now, because I've obviously got an extra citizen, the production time of my archer has decreased because there is another citizen working and producing uh, production or food which is a prime example of something I always say at the start of the game where you prioritize growth over production the faster you can get to three and four citizens in your capital the more it can produce earlier in the long run unfortunately by doing that it's also consumed my builder so be wary of that also be wary of doing it too many times because bonus all resources all the men and women merely players. bonus resources are handy and don't ever run underestimate them we'll fit a district for my wonder later we'll choose a civic where are we going what do we need oh, i'm going to stick out a military tradition simply because it's only a turn might as well pick that up while it's cheap um so campus I build it here plus four adjacency. That is a very nice campus. And because it's a very nice campus, anything above plus three when you initially construct it, so it won't happen again if I get another plus four, once I've built that campus, I get a bonus to my error score, which will stop me from going from a golden age to a dark age, which is very frustrating. Uh, go put an archer in Antium just to give it some protection. I'm fairly sure Phoenicia won't just declare war on me, but I've been wrong before. Uh, yeah, so we now create the escort formation with the warrior. That just assures that wherever the warrior goes, the great person goes. Then I put him onto sleep, basically guarding. Well, we're doing quite well here. Don't underrate the value of military knowledge, but if men make war in slavish obedience to rules, they will fail. Uh, I'm going to have a little look at the policies. 30% production to builders, 50% production towards settlers. That's good. Unit maintenance, just make sure I maximise my gold profit. Gold makes the world go round. You have a lot of gold, you'll find it easier during war. If you can have a lot of gold while having a big army, then you, you, you just win. Um, military training, it gives me the Statue of Zeus. I always find it funny with the Statue of Zeus. So, open civics. There's military training. Strictly speaking, you can go code of laws, craftsmanship, military tradition, straight into military training. Well, no, you need games and recreation as well. So you need state workforce and games and recreation before you can go into military training. Now, that's quite, quite a lot of um, prerequisites for a wonder that gives you free archers, free spearmen and a battering ram pretty much just as you start getting to a point where you're going to phase them out. I mean, plus 50% production towards anti-cavalry units must be built on flat land adjacent to a captain district with a barracks. It's, it's, and plus free gold. It's, not, it's nothing to be mean at, but I just find that getting access to that wonder is a bit late to when you actually want to use it. If it was back here somewhere, then it would be like, yay, but because you don't get it till there and 
you know, we're just about to unlock it. We didn't beeline for it, but our technology is... We've had spearmen for a while. We've had archers for a while. We're about to unlock legions, which will take out the warriors. Strictly speaking, after engineering and ironworking, I can go straight into machinery and get crossbowmen, which phases out archers. So there we go. I'll not even get access to a wonder, and I can already... Um, say that its units are defunct they're, they're you know they're, they're not they're not ancient and i've still got to go through the thing where i've got to produce the wonder so just my two cents sometimes wonders aren't necessarily good uh it gives me an envoy all improved horses and iron resources produce plus one don't underestimate that sometimes that can really help you uh 30 percent production towards encampment districts nah yields gained from pillage and coastal raids not sure. I might go Governor Title. A great library. I never get the Great Library air early enough. Someone always builds it before me. I always forget about it. All right, let's go military training. I don't plan on building the Statue of Zeus because its units are just defunct. Yeah, all right. I get some bonuses. Your cities are so close. Your troops are so strong. You are making me nervous. How many times do I have to say to this? I do not know where you are. I cannot see you on the map. How am I close? Oh, flooding. Great introduction to another disaster. You build along a floodable river. It occasionally floods. In this case, it's a thousand year flood, which happens roughly. And guess what? You guessed it pretty much every other turn. It says a thousand year, but trust me, after a certain point, you think to yourself, hang on a minute. This is like the four thousand year flood I've had in a hundred years. How are they a thousand year floods? <laughs> One man's magic is another man's engineering. Very nice. Uh, depending on the severity of the flood, if I'd built farms along here, they could either they could pillage the farms or completely outright destroy them, requiring the builders to use a charge to reconstruct them. But they also give tile yield bonuses to the tiles that they flooded. So whereas a normal grassland tile gives you two food, these now will give me free food. Put a farm on that for food. I have bountiful harvest. Build a dam in there to stop it from flooding. Bob's your uncle. You have a lot of food. The bread basket of Rome, as we should say. Uh, anyway, viewers, I'm going to end that part. We have progressed quite nicely. Um, didn't really cover too much. Just some basic miscellaneous stuff. Um, hopefully we get to pick up some things as we go along. Uh, Shadet just built a settler because I wasn't too fussed with losing a citizen there because of that housing issue that I pointed out earlier. Um, anyway, viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part and learnt some stuff. I'm Das Lucas, signing off.